I actually enjoy reviewing motherboards a bit later in the year rather than focusing on them right around the launch of new CPUs, especially when it comes to Intel boards. That's because the boards just run better and BIOS updates across the year improve the experience when it comes to how the CPU works and supporting the RAM. In this review, I'm tackling the Gigabyte Z890A Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 board. I actually reviewed the master version of this board last year and I loved it. But this time around, I'm focusing on a more affordable combination of the Elite variation and using an Intel Core Ultra 7 265K CPU to benchmark it. Gigabyte sent over the board for me to test out and I slapped it into my new Haven HS420 gaming case. I have a full review of this case up on the channel too, so you'll want to watch it if you love what you see. Spoiler, the case is cool, just saying. I have paired this board with the Corsair Nautilus RS ARGB cooler which was also sent to me from Rectron alongside the case. I have installed 32GB of Kingston Fury DDR5 6000 MTS RAM on the board too. I know this RAM isn't as high as Intel support but I think that the speed is more consumer friendly and available for what you're looking at spending on this combination and let's be honest RAM is just becoming unaffordable. Essentially, the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite board promises high-end performance without breaking the bank. The board has a focus on Wi-Fi 7, of course, because it is in its name, but it also includes PCIe Gen 5 support and various tool-free features for SSDs. It packs blazing fast Thunderbolt 4 on its USB-C port and comes with all the I.O. you would expect from a modern-day motherboard. In the box, you get the board, some SATA cables, the front I.O. connector adapter, which you don't need on the Haven case, by the way, and a Wi-Fi antenna. There's also some manuals and warranty information. Going through the design quickly, the Gigabyte Z890A Aorus Elite is a sleek black and grey board. It does come in a white model under the brand's ICE range. It doesn't really have all the flashy RGB in the world, but it does include two illuminated spots under the I.O. and another light under the chipset heatsink, which will likely be hidden away by your GPU anyway. Fan headers on this board here include one CPU header, one CPU water cooling pump header, three system fan headers, and one system fan water cooling pump header. There are three ARGB headers and one RGB header. When it comes to the SSDs, there are four M.2 slots on this board, one being Gen 5. It also has the usual four SATA 6GB connectors, USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, and two USB 2.0 headers. There's also the audio header and the front panel header. On the IO shield, you'll find one Thunderbolt 4 port, two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, three Type-A USB 3.2 Gen 1A ports, four Type-A USB 2 ports, the antenna connector, one display port, one RJ45 port, one optical audio out connector, and two audio jacks. There's nothing really stand out here, and that's okay. Instead of having to learn new tech, the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite essentially offers everything you'd expect from a board when it comes to customization and I.O. Of course, three ARGB headers are a bit tight for those with loads of LEDs, but you'll likely manage if you get some hubs and extensions. I did like that Gigabyte has included the postcode display on this board because often boards at this price range don't include them, and they make such a world of difference when it comes to troubleshooting. There's also the reset and Q flash button, which is expected. Installing the SSD is quick enough thanks to the tool list clasp that let me remove the heatsink. The main SSD is found under a thicker metal heatsink. The other three slots are then found under the lower plate. I installed the motherboard in the Haven HS420 case and connected it all together. Be sure to check out my review of that case if you're interested in seeing exactly how smooth the process was. Booting up the PC, of course I was met with the usual BIOS post roadblock, code 61 in this case which I knew was RAM related. So I downloaded a BIOS update, slapped it into a USB, plugged it into the BIOS USB port at the back, pressed the Q flash button and waited for the BIOS to install. I know Q flash is an old feature now, but I love the fact that you can update the BIOS on a build before you even get into Windows, just to make sure everything just works properly. I immediately then dived into the BIOS settings after installing Windows. Gigabyte recently overhauled it with a new theme, which I actually quite like. I enabled a number of Intel CPU exclusive settings here that you'll need if you want to get the most out of the CPU. Easy mode settings here, well, make it easy enough for anyone to understand what is happening, but advanced is where you'll really get to dive into the tweaks on your PC. For this review, I did want to make testing easy while at the same time test the best environment for the PC. I enabled Gigabyte's perf drive and switched between some settings during tests. 
you'll see the exact tests in the benchmarks. But if you want a better handle of your temperatures and power limits, you can also tweak this manually too. RAM boosts also need to be enabled here and you'll need to choose the best profile for your RAM sticks. Given that I only had 6200 MTS RAM, I obviously chose that profile. Power delivery on this board is 16 plus 1 plus 2 with a digital twin VRM heatsink and an 80 amp smart power stage design which is there to handle the core Ultra Series 2 CPUs. MOSFETs include the thermal armor system surrounding the CPU socket and Gigabyte says these are larger than before, although not drastically that bigger. I then ran some benchmarks. I ran the usual Cinebench R23, 3 d Mark, Geekbench and more. I started out by enabling the Intel 200S boost mode and running tests on Intel Level 1 performance preset which is found in the BIOS. During my test, the motherboard held up quite well. VRM temperatures peaked at 41 degrees Celsius while the CPU was hitting 69 degrees Celsius during Cinebench rendering. Power draw was reaching 230 watts on the CPU during multi-core tests and 35 watts on single core tests. Pushing this even further in a more intense benchmark and stress test, the CPU stayed at around 68 degrees with the power draw still at 230 watts. This was after leaving the stress test running for 15 minutes in CPU-Z. Even then, I was very surprised at how well the entire build managed to stay cool. It was really an effort to get the CPU to even scrape near the 70 degree mark. Even the VRM sensor was only reading 43 degrees Celsius max during these stress tests. Of course, this isn't a Core Ultra 9 CPU, so these mild temperatures are expected. When testing out the Core Ultra 9 last year, I remember it easily breezing into the high 90s and even the 100 degrees Celsius mark. I then changed the motherboard BIOS setting to Intel Level 3 Extreme mode to see if it made a difference. And it did. Scores were slightly higher and the general thermal boost was seen across all tests. The same stress test saw the CPU temperature climb well above 71 degrees, the CPU package was even reaching 77 degrees Celsius at times. Power draw stayed at around 230 watts though. Outside of that, RAM temperatures were also okay at 44 degrees Celsius. They were reading 3000 MHz which is their Expo Mode 6000 MTS setting. So everything I enabled to boost this board's performance was working just fine. I can't complain about this Gigabyte Z890 or a Elite motherboard. Regardless of what I think about Intel right now, this board and CPU bundle provide some fantastic performance for users and altogether, they aren't ridiculously expensive either. Sure, the competition does do it better, but that often comes at higher costs and some skimped features. My opinion here is that this is a decent motherboard and Intel CPU combination. It excels in its thermal handling and it delivers some decent performance. If you're shopping around for something in this market, you can't go wrong here. Anyone who needs a gaming board and if you're worried about spending in the high 8000 Rand upwards, this is your answer because it is half the price. So those are my thoughts on the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite board. Huge thanks to Gigabyte for sending it my way to review. While you're here, be sure to check out my reviews of the new Gigabyte notebook range that's now available in South Africa. Also be sure to check out the review of the Haven HS420 case that I have up on the channel too. While you're here, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on future content. Until next time, farewell.